for for those of you that are listening, the Lesser Known People podcast does have a band. It's titled after one of our 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 members, Big Cat. The title of the band is Big Cat. Never played a fucking show together. We just get together <laughs> in, our, in, in Ryan's basement. But when you hear us live, you're going to hear a triangle so, uh, solo by KY Jones. That's true. Mm-hmm. It, and it will be just just as to show my strengths. It'll be accompanied with an interpretive dance in the solo itself where I will be bearing a lot of skin. And for more of my skin, feel free to check out my Fans Only page. Mm-hmm. Yep. Fans Only yep. page. KY Jelly and Pepper. It's him and his cat. Please check him out on Fans Only. A lot of interesting stuff. I have been there recently because I just I have fantasies. I have fantasies that need to be fulfilled. Ryan has a fantasy of owning a cat. I've, that's what it is. It's a fantasy <laughs> of owning a cat. It's a fantasy of I'm owning gonna a say, cat. I was going to say, what keeps me coming back to KY's Only Fans is the cat. I want to see yeah. a nice Maine Coon spread eagle. Is she a mm-hmm. Maine Coon? What is, the fuck is she? I don't know. She was a, she was a free box cat, whatever breed that is. <laughs> free box. <laughs> well, if, for, if, if you guys want to listen to more of KY's bad jokes, bring it. Check us out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's the best. Check us out. Time. You can find us. Please find us on uh, any social media. Facebook. We are Lesser Known People on Facebook. We are on uh, Instagram, Lesser Known People Podcast. Uh, Twitter, which we definitely didn't forget about, find us at at LKP Podcast, uh, Podbay, uh, other sites that hold podcasts. Wherever <laughs> you go for them, where do you go for them? The dark internet. You go to dark web to find them. I'll fill that void. Find us on, <laughs> on Spotify. Find us on iTunes. Find us on Overcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Podbay, Owlcast. Find us anywhere that streams podcasts. You will be there. Drop us a line if you have an idea of what you want you want us to do a uh, episode on. We'll absolutely do it. Mm. And I I I wanna I wanna let the listeners know now that um, this is one of those multiple episodes in one night sort of quote unquote tapings. So this is round two. We're getting we're getting jaw jammed up. We're getting loose with the jelly here. So um, unjammed. If you loved hand job bot, you'll love this oh, one. Lord. That's what he's trying yeah. to tell our audience right now. <laughs> And with that, welcome to the Lesser Known People podcast. Please find us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Lesser Known People, um, on our, our website of lessernownpeople.com, Instagram, Lesser Known People, Twitter, which we definitely didn't forget about one more time, at LKP Podcast. Find us on anywhere you can get podcasts available. We are there. And certainly shoot us a line on anything you want us to present about. And that is what we are doing tonight. I am taking... I am taking the recommendation of uh, a good friend of mine, Um, but I am joined tonight by four of the five wonderful members of LKP. We are absent of Connor this evening. He has a he has a family issue. Uh, We're not even going to make a joke about it. Usually, uh, I say things that are fictional about when people are gone. Tonight, I can't. I cannot. I can't do it anymore. I don't know what's going on. I lost that steam. Lost that steam. Prayers. Prayers for Con Man. Prayers Prayers for for Con Man. Man. Prayers for Con Man. But this evening, I am joined by the wonderful, beautiful, beautiful Sean the Magic Carpet Ride. Sean, baby, how you feeling I was this not evening? thinking that was coming at me first. I was just like literally stoned and staring off in the distance. Thought you were going to say something beautiful about somebody else. <laughs> that summarizes Sean this what? evening. That does summarize Sean this evening. <laughs> Sean, you are beautiful. I don't want anyone to tell you differently. You are beautiful, no matter what they say. Well, these two jokers will definitely bring you try down. to differently. Do you know what I mean? Differently. They will. Tr- they will try to bring you down. But you need to remember Christina Aguilera what she said to you. Okay. Rub, rub my genie bottle. I am also joined by a man in a beanie, in a flannel, in his basement. Also beautiful. He's got a very, very beautiful texture to himself. Mister KY KY Jelly, how you doing, Kyle? I'm I'm doing just lovely, just lovely. I'm I'm thick with tacos. I'm thick with taco jelly. And I'm, again, I said it before, I'll say it again. I'm feeling viscous. I'm feeling lubed up. K- KY Pate. Yeah. For, for our listeners' sake, uh, it was alluded to earlier. He bought his uh, uh, tacos at a popular fast food restaurant for sake of, of, of uh, trademark. We won't say the name. It was Taco Gong. Think of an instrument that makes sound <laughs> in that second portion. KY, we love you, baby. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, Thank you for hosting. Mm, mm, mm. Absolutely. That's, you know, I know how to do these things of, of turning on Zoom and uh, all that. Yeah. 
Turning on boom. Turn boom. On boom. I'm sorry. Turn boom. on boom. Turn on boom. Yep. Who am I? Yep. Yeah. Turn on boom. Using oh the boom. my. <laughs> the boom machine. Using the boom machine. Uh, and and last but certainly not least is a very very beautiful uh, J Money, J Master. How you doing, Mr. Justin? Everything all right I'm this good. evening? I'm good, man. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of three sheets to the wind right now. So this is gonna be a really interesting uh, episode. Woo! I drank a lot during the last Woo! recording. So here we go. It's uh you know full disclosure. I knew I knew I was drinking I was drinking during the first episode. I knew I was going to go second so I had to pace myself. It's not a good feeling. I'm one of those people when I start drinking I just want to keep going. I had to pace myself. Courageous restraint. That's what they call that. When you hold back on the drinks. <laughs> Stanley McChrystal and myself used courageous restraint. That's what we're doing out <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> courageous restraint. I, I yeah, I believe I'm I'm holding back some I'm not actually. I'm failing at courageous restraint. <laughs> I am just ladling whiskey into my mouth. Justin already performed. We had an enormous number of technical issues, but we still got we through that episode somehow. It's a three-piecer somehow. But we are there. We are fucking there. And and uh, again, thank you for listening. All of, all of you out there, please, you can find us on any streaming platform, lesser known people. Certainly hit us up on any social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We'd love to hear what you guys think. This evening, gentlemen, I am so unbelievably happy this was presented to me by my uh, a very good friend of mine uh rachel she's a colleague she's an incredible incredible teacher she is someone i look at myself and i think wow i am just a fucking imposter in this profession you're an incredible teacher <laughs> uh, too humble too humble they she uh, she she uh she suggested this individual and uh i think we all said this is absolutely someone we need to to uh present the individual tonight is significant in numerous uh, categories, was not really rediscovered until recently, where they became kind of more of an interest and a light on, on this sort of thing. This young lady, uh, her name was Gladys Bentley, born in 1907, died in 1960. Uh, so she was very young. She was about 52 when she died. As, a, as the name Gladys Bentley goes, we already know she's a badass. Like, oh, yeah. From... yeah, yeah. The name should indicate to everyone she's a total badass. Oh, yeah. for sure. Uh, but big shout out to Rachel if you're listening. Thank you so much for this recommendation. And again, please, if you're listening, go ahead, shoot us a recommendation on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, rotten, wherever you might find with them. It. I'm just running with them. I'm running with them. Because <laughs> they're going to find us. You say it enough, they they come to you. You say it enough, they find you. That's what they say. They're not bad plugs. I think this is like the third or fourth episode we've done yeah. from listeners who have given us ideas to do, do ideas on. So if you're listening and you like what you hear and you want us to do something for you, we'll absolutely do it. Absolutely do it. Do not, do not pretend we will not shy away from your suggestions because we'll, no, we'll dive sure. in. We dive in head first, like that guy diving head first into an ice pool. That's popular on the internet right now. It's a fun video. <laughs> Go check that one out too. But also while you're on the internet, check out, find us on Facebook, Instagram. <laughs> 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 hit him again hit him again yeah, that's we like, got four like four and we like got five. four plugs we got four, four plugs, plugs. We got four plugs. Minutes. guys i'm a hype man i'm a hype man we were off to a great start with this podcast we're oh already we're I already can, rolling I can, I can feel the minutes of editing <laughs> tick by yeah, here yeah. <laughs> let it roll let it roll release the big catch just ky well, promise me you leave all of this in you oh, this is eight. Hey, remember what what is not released to big cat tapes, but remember what's the new motto of of LKP? We'll fix it in post. We'll, we'll fix it in post. post. We'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. That's absolutely right. We'll fix it in post, which is basically where one person does all the voices for every single person. Yeah, <laughs> that's our that's a new T shirt, right? We could actually include Connor in this one because he has pre recorded responses to everything we're going to say. Right? That's exactly he right. Does, uh, he we does. I I will I didn't I didn't want to say it and say that Connor was absent. I was just going to play the tape and then he would just have pre recorded responses. But in this case, in Can't this case, uh, we'll let the public know Connor is not with us. I'm not going to try to fake his presence here this evening. Anyways, Gladys Bentley, an incredible human being. She played a, a very significant role in the Harlem Renaissance. She is both a a icon to the black community. She is also a true pioneer in the LGBTQ community. Uh, Gladys Bentley, born in 1907 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which, uh, you know, none of us know about. No. Well, I, I have to say, as a Republican, I have to bow out of this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing good to say. He already knows. This is this is not in the shallow end of the diversity pool, so Justin's no, got to no, go. No, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. 
No, don't let Justin downplay you. He's very woke to these matters. He, he's, he I'm, just, I'm, I'm just kidding. As a Republican, I I, I love hearing about the LJB. <laughs> LGBT. <laughs> and we'll fix that in post. LGBTQ. We'll post. Oh, LGBTQ. We'll post. That is not discriminatory. That is whiskey talking. That is what whiskey. That is. that is purely whiskey talking in that case. I will 100% abide. I love the gay community. I am just too drunk to be part of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but we're we're gonna keep him anyway. He'll he'll tag right along, just as fun as always. And that ties right in <laughs> with uh, hero this evening of Gladys Bentley. Again, born 1907 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. A large family. Um, she was shamed as a kid primarily. Uh, as a kid, she was a little, uh, let's say, over her size and preferred to wear men's clothing. Um, her, it was widely known that her, her mom was upset with her, that she was not a boy being born. And therefore there was some kind of stigma between her and her mother, but the rest of the family, uh, certainly for lack of a better term, kind of black sheeped her, uh, as to why are you a girl wearing boys clothing? So she felt rejected, obviously. And, and those of us who are perhaps in, in fields, uh, in professions where we deal with children, If they're younger and you're shaming them, that does have some pretty detrimental effects. To her resilience, when she is 17, she says, Sayonara, Philadelphia, yo home, smell you later, to quote the great Will Smith, and goes to uh, Harlem. Harlem at this time, uh, if we're following on her timeline, uh, is the incredible Harlem Renaissance period, which is nothing more than a, a pure hotbed of just incredible culture um, embracing the black community, certainly promoting the black community and in, in all the wherewithal that it had. So, B- Big Cat, sorry. Um, uh, so this is, this is 1918, 1919? No, this was in so ni- was- 19, 1920s, 1920s. Sorry, she was born in, she was born in 07. Not 07, I yeah. 01, I apologize. Yeah, okay. Which I, I guess also kind of speaks to her, her upbringing where her parents were not accepting of her tomboyishness for yeah. lack of a better term and and to, and to that to that item uh i do want to disclose her father was american her mother was trinidadian you know in in more kind of conservative households obviously if your daughter is dressing like a tomboy dressing up in suits not being very feminine that does stand out a bit well i mean i mean given the time though i think yes. that not to knock her parents so much but damn mom and dad if you're listening let your kids do what they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, cer- certainly uh, we're all evolved enough on this podcast and, and the world does not share that perspective. 1907 through the teens and 20s, that would have absolutely been the mindset of, of why is our daughter doing this? Uh, they had kind of held more of those more traditional values of, of gender roles. Credit, credit to her for, for doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And sticking by it. Sticking by it through and through. Even though, uh, in many cases, she certainly felt rejected. Like, where do I fit in sort of thing? Uh, Which, again, uh, when you're dealing with an adolescent psyche, is extremely damaging. Um, But to her credit, she goes to Harlem. She has some musical training. Uh, Again, Harlem at this time is a thriving community. Um, It's it's almost uncomparable to anything that we've seen in our lifetime with the, the amount of pure culture and, and items we reference today that come out of that community. She takes a job at the at a a, a bar that is also uh, one of the most notorious gay speakeasies. Um, so while Harlem at large is certainly a community that thrives with the black community, they are also servicing a thriving gay community as well. There are certain bars that will service uh, that community, which that's it, uh... For those of us kind who of, have only kind of briefly studied Harlem, is kind of revolutionary to think that it does service two different spectrums. Yeah, that, Anyways, that's ahead. kind of crazy to me. I, I had no idea that there were gay servicing speakeasies in the time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. This is um this is something I've only read about in in really recent years. I don't think that's something that comes with your your basic uh, historical education. So this was incredible to hear. Um, but and again, as a podcast where we support. All these groups, we love them for what they provide and, and who they are. This was enlightening for me to hear and, and to read. She goes, um, there is a, at Hansberry's, there is an, uh, an ad out for a male 
pianist, essentially, to play for all the tunes. So uh, what does she do? She goes and she dresses in a really nice, fine press suit that she has and goes up and says, I'm here for the pianist job. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So she is like a trained pianist at the time, right? You yeah, say she, she, had... she, has, she has had musical lessons. She is a singer in her own right. Probably had piano growing up, certainly within the family, that sort of thing. So she she is confident enough in her ability she's going to play. She is known for wearing these very, very kind of um, fine kind of, you know, suit pants that what we would call suit pants today. Certainly in the time period looked out of place. But she shows up, she's wearing male suits, and she's ready to fucking roll in Harlem. She gets the job. Obviously, they hear her cuts, they hear her chops. And she is off to the fucking horses. She is there. She's making um, $35 a week. And then when she starts performing full time as a singer, she starts making about $125 a week. So she is booming. She has signed. She has also signed a contract with Hansberry himself. And that comes into some problems later on. We'll get there. But she is she is booming. This night scene is huge. $125 a week. That's like a, a shit ton, right? Yes, yeah. Uh, in 1920s, in that economy, um, I obviously don't have an inflation calculator offhand here, but she is making a very nice wage as a performer at this time. So she, uh, again, goes from performing. She now has also backing dancers. These backing dancers are all uh, drag queens. They are men dressing up uh, in full female regalia, uh, identifying as female at this time. She herself uh, is obviously a female dressing in male clothing. And so things are kind of going great. Um, she becomes very well known in that era by uh, people who would frequent these, these the clubs at the time. So Cesar Romero, Hugh Herbert, uh, Cary Grant, Barbara Stanwyck, um, a lot of celebrities who are very prominent at that time. She has now expanded her platform as well. And she's not just in Harlem. She is, she is taken this beautiful show on the road she is touring she's hitting cleveland pittsburgh chicago um this place called hollywood i don't know if you guys have ever heard of it never heard of it okay never heard of it okay it's 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 supposedly it's in south california sean could you speak to that where's hollywood i mean it's 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 got its own area that's kind of ready to you know slough off into the sea and just yeah, so they're sea slothers, <laughs> is what I'm hearing. But also, as a quick note, so 125 dollars in 19 uh, in that time frame would probably be about 1860, 1860 dollars today. Okay. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Okay. She's so making guess good what? Money then. Things are really fucking good for Gladys. <laughs> She's super dope. Right, Ryan. Can I? Uh, I have a couple questions. So, um, yeah. When they when they hired her, the the posting was for a male performer. She showed up. Did they as a know female that... in male clothing? So, right. So they w- when they showed up, did she say, "Hey, my name is Gladys"? Like, I I, I just did, did they did they know she was female? She did have a a a, a stage name, um, and that's a good point. Let me find where I had that reference real quick here. Yeah, I just didn't know if um, she had presented herself as male. Her stage name at the time was Barbara Bobby Minton. So it's not like she's hiding that she's female by any okay. means. Okay, that was, that was, I guess that was my question. So she, I mean, she is, you know, I, I hate to use a, such a vague colloquialism, but she's living the truth right there. She, and absolutely, she's, absolutely. Yeah, she's she like, I'm, I'm a woman. She, at the time at least, she's identifying as a woman, but as a woman wearing male's clothes. And I'm going to come rock your fucking socks off yeah. my talent. Absolutely, absolutely. She's showing yeah. up. And it to me, this is true testament of her talent because... Clearly, she's playing, she's singing. She uh, gives this thing. I have no idea how the actual owners of the bar who are reaching out. It's, it is a gay bar. Hansberry himself, I believe, was gay. So they would probably be more accepting of this sort of thing anyways. But at the same time, it is testament to your talent when, when they ask for a male pianist and you show up and you just fucking rock their socks. And it's like, male, did I say male? I meant you, baby. That's, Come here. So You're working here now, awesome. sweetheart. Come here. She is Barbara Bobby Minton at this time as she's touring. So uh, the, the gig she's playing becomes bigger and bigger. Um, and while she does play piano and she sings, um, some are her own songs. For the most part, 
It's also a lot of her doing basically lampoons of popular songs, but adding in super sexually explicit lyrics, Ooh, like songs about sick. anal sex sick. and just anything she wants to fucking jump on yeah. board with. Oh she goes, so God. think of if, if Weird Al took a song and he's lampooning it, and then it's just purely sexual for the three minutes and 23 that seconds that so he's fucking, fucking recording. Awesome. Yeah. That is. Yeah. That'd be so cool. So she, yes. she has just jumped the fucking gun. And it comes down to, uh, it's very, very divisive because, well, so if you're in speaky easy culture at this time, you live, for anyone who studied U.S. history, you are younger, you're probably more accepting of just kind of whatever, um, and you are essentially looking for a good time. So the majority of her audience is already into this. When it leaks out what she's doing as she signs a record label later on, it, it kind of becomes like, wait a minute, I didn't realize this is what's fucking popular with the kids. We might need to reconsider because it's just, uh, it's not gonna work. That's exactly how I felt about TikTok the first time I saw it. I yeah. was like, what? What is this? Kids like this? Oh my god. I've, now, again, I've been accused of being a boomer myself, but, uh, boy, yeah, boy, the, and you, you know, K- KY is the only, only member of this podcast who is over 65 years of age. It's true. He has been yeah. collecting, Shockingly. he has been collecting uh, social security for a He's little bit. He's actually now. yelled at kids to get off his yard. I, mm-hmm. I will hop I will hop on the KY bandwagon. Yes. I do not Mickmock. Mick Mick Mock, yeah. None of us are saying me. we enjoy Mickmock. Okay. But I at <laughs> least understand it's a fucking app on the phone device. Well I know that I didn't get the dance what's the I see thing? fucking kids setting their phones up and dancing off in like fucking traffic and shit. I'm just like, come on man. Come on man. No one wants to see yeah. that shit. Some this people gotta go to me. work. This is not helping anyone right now, man. You're slowing us yeah. all down. Get the fuck out of here. I can only say this as someone uh, who is a teacher, but when kids will pull out the phone and try to do a TikTok dance in class, and you're like, you need to sit the fuck down. We're in the Gilded Age right now. I need you to talk about this, bro. You need to get with this right now. Yeah. Come on. Anyways, enough about the Mi'kmaq. Enough about Mi'kmaq. Enough about Mi'kmaq. She becomes so popular. Um, she does get signed with OK Records. Uh, that's O-K-E-H Records. And recorded... Eight sides. So she's signing a lot of singles at this point, and and this goes up until 1929. She uh, is still enormously prominent. Um, Langston Hughes himself at one point says, for two or three amazing years, Miss Bentley sat and played piano all night long. We scarcely a break uh, between the notes sliding from one song to another with a powerful and continuous underbeat of jungle rhythm. Miss Bentley was an amazing exhibition of musical energy, a large dark, masculine lady whose feel pounded the floor while her fingers pounded the keyboard, a perfect piece of African sculpture animated by her own rhythm. Um, Langston Hughes, Fuck obviously... yeah. Langston Hughes, obviously a, a tremendous force in his own right. Uh, also a very prominent figure in both the, a, the Harlem Renaissance and also the gay community. Uh, so with that said, she was just a total force. She had just such a guttural voice when she was singing, apparently about these particular items. She never, to her, to, to uh, this idea, she never posed, and, and this goes on what, uh, what KY was saying, she never posed seemingly to be a man. She was never a quote-unquote uh, drag king. She was uh, essentially a, a black masculine woman is how she posed. Um, she never, again, in what is, a, I, I feel like at times all these genres can get confused by particularly those of us who are not in that community, but that is how she stated, which I feel like would be even a harder avenue to go down because you are, you are not identifying as a man. You are a woman in a, in a man's uh, essentially realm of performance. So she was, just, she was just being her, though. Yes. Yeah. She was being 100% her. Yeah, to her core. This is, if we were to use a very poor analogy of, of just absolute kind of female empowerment and being who the fuck you are, I would compare it to, again, poor reference, but this is what first came to mind, would be a Lizzo uh, today, where Lizzo is just kind of 100% her, and she's going to say whatever the fuck she wants on a track. You see her at accepting an award, and it's just like, yeah, she'll just say what she wants for like 10 seconds. Someone tries to cut her off. She's basically like, no, fuck you. I still got stuff I got to say. And she's out of there. <laughs> just like... This woman, everybody fucking loves you. You do you. This is power. We love you. When you were when you were saying about her her guttural type of singing, I 
I imagine like a very like Tracy Chapman type of, of singer. And I love Tracy Chapman is one of my favorite singer songwriters of all time. And yeah. Tracy, like I didn't even, like when I was a kid, when I was a little kid listening to my mom, listen to Tracy Chapman. I was like, Oh, that's a nice dude. That's a cool dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. She does. She does. Yeah. My favorite singer songwriters of all time. She asked for one reason to stay here and you gave it to her. Yep. Or or she'll turn or she'll turn right back around. Or she'll turn right back around. Yeah. She'll turn right back around. You never know. I don't know what's you going on. You also have a fast car. You have a fast car as well. I'm down with that. With all of that, <laughs> with all of that, as Prohibition comes to an end, nineteen thirties, we are heading into our, our Great Depression. Uh she is sadly, uh the appeal is kind of on the decline for her. She does at one point marry a a white woman in New Jersey, which in a civil service, she quite frankly just goes out and does this. The white woman has actually never been identified, but it's it's well claimed that she went ahead and did this. Well, well oh. hold on, hold on, hold on. She she actually married civil service, civil service, yeah, of a uh, of a white woman. They in New Jersey. I have no idea. I actually had no idea that New Jersey's laws were apparently that fluid, that that was able to happen in the 1930s, but it did happen. She supposedly married this woman in a civil service. No shit. Prior to gay marriage ever being ratified anywhere? Anywhere. Anywhere. Yes. They were, they had a civil service. Wow. Yeah. That's fucking rocking, dude. That's fucking rocking. All right. So that, that happened. Uh, The white woman was never identified. That did not last long. Well, Gladys has got to keep on keeping. She got. She got to keep on keeping on. So she does move. She does move to L.A. and she's trying to uh, resuscitate her career. Oh boy. She runs into a problem which a lot of people had at this time. This is roughly the year of 1952. So she's kind of been out of the spotlight for a while. Wow, um, yeah. She uh, is being is is in the process of being ordained as a minister. Um, she says she has been cured and is taking female hormones. It's largely believed she was doing this because of our. This is so strange. He's reoccurring twice on this on this podcast within the same night because of uh, Joe McCarthy and McCarthyism. She is trying wow. to openly hide um, her her uh, sexuality as at that time. In addition, with communism, we were also apparently hunting homosexuals. I, I no idea. I have no explanation on that, that one. That's I, like I, a that's a that's a crazy jump, man, to go from being in Harlem and doing her thing to L.A. and being coming an ordained minister. Like, yes. first of all, just like for listeners that don't know, to become an ordained minister as a woman is hard enough. To become yeah. an ordained minister as a lesbian woman was probably damn near impossible in as, as a black gay woman this came back to uh uh what is widely known as today as conversion therapy which is we know kind of pseudoscience ridiculous is is pseudoscience we'll just it's say that ridiculous. pray the gay away yeah pray the gay away is pseudoscience uh and i i would like to and I, I apologize for interrupting ryan i would like to say vehemently as nice as ryan is being this entire podcast thinks that that's fucking horseshit yeah and yeah you should never do that to your child or anyone you love. So don't fucking do it. And if you do it, don't listen to this fucking podcast. I am so many strong feelings about that. Pseudoscience was not strong enough. If you believe in, in conversion therapy, you're a fucking idiot. I don't know what else yeah. to tell you. Yeah. Just you be you. Yeah. How, how about how about love first? Just do love first. It's the Christian way. It's the human way. Just do love first. It's 100% the Christian way. If you're a Christian, love first. Get the fuck out of here with your fucking nonsense. Sorry, Ryan. I apologize for interrupting. No, I, I appreciate you sticking up and reminding people. Um, I, I'm one of the proudest things on this podcast, other than the, the wonderful dick chatter that always <laughs> happens. <laughs> I think Got we, me. quite frankly, Got have me. values, and one of the things we will we will stand against is anything that is is repressive in any form. And uh, yeah. we've had many stories where those have come up, and and we need to be loud and clear about that. We accept anyone for who they are and that is just absolutely 100 percent the way it should be and conversion therapy is is the devil itself yes gladys who went against the very sadistic stupid uh illogical conversion therapy but said she had been cured um from that told ebony magazine uh which i didn't even realize ebony magazine has been around that long so i am very ignorant 
told Ebony Magazine, I'm a woman again. And, and uh, certainly said becoming an ordained minister helped change her life. She did get married a couple other times, both to men who... <laughs> It ended after a couple months to both of them. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. you know, I mean, that might tell you something. <laughs> I, I know that um, one of the, I want to say common practice, because I don't want to speak too far out of turn, but with, with gay conversion therapy, um, they will take the women who are lesbians or identify as gay, bi, whatever, but they, they make them think they're straight or they pretend they're straight or whatever the fuck it is. They do the same thing with the gents and then they, basically try to pair those folks up or at least people from from the church um and they pair them up but typically you're talking about two people who don't actively want to have sex with each other yeah, well. <laughs> and, and after a couple of months they're both like so we still don't want to have sex with each other and we're just going to be done with this now like it just it doesn't jive it doesn't it, does it jive. doesn't work it's it's a mythical idea con man brought the concept up with the the, the julianne d'abri episode uh, so if you guys want to listen to that, hit us up on Spotify. You know, it's a, it's not supposed to be a plug. It's supposed to be relevant. But uh, Conman brought that up with the Julianne D'Aubrey episode where Julianne was in love with a woman who had got sent to a, a commune, uh, a religious commune, where she was supposed to pray away the gay. And, of course, it yeah. didn't work because Julianne broke in there and burnt the fucking place down. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, yeah. So anyway, so Gladys's marriage to these gentlemen did these not gentlemen, work out. One was a cook, one was another uh, an individual out in L.A. They did not last terribly long. She did also engage, unfortunately, in a legal battle. Um, Hansberry, uh, from that first club she was at, um, and the co-owner sued her that... <laughs> That suit went all the way up to the Supreme Court because wow. she was essentially under contract for about five years. So she had to pay off these debts of, of essentially working for these apparently heinous club owners. What, 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 was she, what, was, what was she sued for? The suit was she was not allowed to perform songs under any other entity, and she was doing so both recording-wise under um, OK Records and uh, just under a separate entity entirely. She had signed whatever to tour around the country. I forget whatever entity she had signed with. You guys remember... Remember, uh, like a Neil Young's lawsuit that he had. Uh, Neil Young was was sued, kind of irrelevant to her story. Neil Young has a fucking white guy, um, but uh, Neil Young was sued by his original label for sounding too much like Neil Young. Oh, that was John he... Fogarty. John Fogarty. Was it John Fogarty? I thought I thought I thought Neil Young ran into the same situation. He John Fogarty got sued for sounding too much like Creedence Clearwater Revival because he's the singer of Creedence oh, Clearwater he, Revival okay, okay, okay. when he released his solo wow. stuff. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's if you if you are interested in legal suits, we had a wonderful wonderful uh, item. Not to plug my own fucking show. <laughs> plug it, plug it, plug <laughs> it, baby, do it. David Ritz. Go listen to our David Ritz episode. It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. It's on the moon, quite frankly, at this point. It's probably been sent out there on on on, on uh, whatever, whatever. What's Elon Musk's, what's his thing? SpaceX? It's SpaceX. 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 Okay, it is SpaceX. I got that reference, right? Deep Space Lesser Known Podcast. Lesser deep, Known People. Yeah, That's Deep Space Lesser Known Podcast. Yeah. The, the, the David Ritz episode is a fantastic episode, by the way, so check it out. It was, it was a fun one. It was, all, it was only a trio, so all of our beautiful personalities were not there, and that's the, that's the detractor. Join us next week when we have Elon Tusk. Well, yeah, we'll have Elon Tusk on. He will be on, and he's going to smoke pot with us. I know he smokes pot with a lot of prominent podcasters, but we'll get him to smoke it's pot true. with us. Plus, this one's cooler because he's got, you know, giant, giant tusks. Yeah, it's, it's actually just a... It's a drunk walrus. So it is. It on. is. A, it is. A, yeah. It's a walrus. We got drunk. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, uh, to further her personal life here, she has that whole suit. Um. She eventually goes on to the. This is fucking random. Uh. She goes on to um, a a, <laughs> when she's basically, non-existent, she goes on to a a a, a, a game show hosted by Groucho Marx. Um. <laughs> Well, that is relevant to all of us. Yeah, yeah. where um, she, he actually had her sit down and sing and, and play a couple tunes, but she was, at this point, it was like so far, this was 1958. This was two years before she died, long before her kind of heyday. Groucho Marx, like the notable sexist, right? 
Yeah, yeah, he was the he was the 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 talk show host. He was the um, game show host, comedian, satirist. Yeah, he did a bunch of stuff. But yes, also held views that were probably in conflict of what everything she stood for. Yeah. <laughs> so she goes on to that show because she's in L.A. I guess that's what you do in L.A. You go on game shows. <laughs> Uh, and she, two years later, she dies in, uh, she is actually, yeah, she dies in, in 1960 at the age of 52. Um, they originally thought it was a strain of flu that was going around at that time that was really bad. Uh, but it turns out it, it advanced to pneumonia and, and, she, and she died. This was just before she actually became a, a fully certificate holding ordained minister. Wow. Man, so so what 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 branch of 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 religion was she trying to be an ordained minister in? I'm not seeing. I'm sorry. On the three or four pages I have pulled up, I'm not seeing what branch she is specifically. Right, no big deal. Not terribly relevant, but still, I mean, you can assume being a minister, she's probably a Christianic religion, a religion of Abraham somewhere. But damn, like as a woman to be an ordained minister, even today. Even today in, in 2020 is difficult for women. Yeah. So for her to do it back then is actually a testament to her 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 stance as a woman and, and her place and who, in, oh in my society. gosh who she was yeah and and certainly to play on um really what seemed as though two or three different uh, social areas really because she had her community that was very strong in Harlem and then certainly that grew as she was touring around the country and then when she got a record label but then to also dabble in something else that's as socially conservative as a religious sect and certainly taking up a position yeah um, like as a yeah. as a black gay or black lesbian woman like that's that's wild that for that time yeah did she have any additional uh same sex relationships before she passed the only one we know of is the fact that she did marry this unidentified white woman in New Jersey in a civil service. Okay. That is not to say she did not have other relationships with other women. I would assume, like a lot of these figures who were in Harlem at this time, the her dating life was probably pretty fulfilled. Because um, yeah. the characters I referenced earlier who certainly uh, frequented a lot of these known gay nightclubs were, you know, certainly out there. But if she so when she was out in LA though she had she obviously did the gay conversion therapy we've already talked about that but she had those failed um, heterosexual relationships and so at the time was she was she then as far as historical purposes she was single when she passed yes yeah she was she was technically single when she passed she was not married when she passed she did have heterosexual relationships with a couple of men did she ever ever have children with those guys she had anything? no she had no children. Yeah, can't imagine why. On yeah. the other yeah. side, I do know she came from a pretty large family, so I'm assuming her family has, the Bentleys have essentially lived on. So she does probably have descendants that are, you know, grand, grand, grand nephews or whatever at this point. Right. Or nieces. Wow. Wow. I mean, what a what an interesting sort of like fucking show up in Harlem and just like, I don't want to say become a superstar because that's probably writing off all the hard work she did, but she just... You know, shows up to audition that's for a guy, and then it's like, now nah, I'm going to be real fucking popular for a long time. Yeah. And then, you know, you know, maybe her star kind of fizzled, and, and she was maybe in and out of the spotlight, just doing these sort of side gigs as, as and I hate to use the term has been, but especially as you guys know better than I do, as huge music fans, that the starlight in the, in the industry is, is not so bright for so long. So, you know, it, it burns bright, but it's short. So then... She's kind of finding her way towards the end of to her life. To me, there. this is this is a this is a story of both a, a talent, an extremely unique individual, and certainly a, one of our greatest attributes in America, and that is the prospect of opportunity. And she right. certainly took uh, the opportunity when it arose. You are ripe for really, really prominent, flourishing art scene in Harlem. She knew she could go there and make her name doing that. So right. she she certainly capitalized on that. There, there's always a parallel to me, and I think I mentioned it before in the um, Henry Paget episode. Please check it out. It not, it not Spotify, just because... Spotify, iTunes, iTunes anywhere you whole... can find podcasts. It's on all the shits. Yeah, it's on all the shits. Um, but there is a certain performance piece to the church. And so, you know, 
certainly potentially as a uh, as a performer it, yeah. it and and very obvious clearly as a christian um or as a practitioner of or whatever she was going for probably christian she you know may have very much appealed to her her um her performance abilities as well as her her passion for for Christianity to do both. She undoubtedly grew up uh in a household that was probably going to church. There's there's right. no question about that. The manner in which most well we'll just say it, uh the manner in which the church plays a really prevalent role in most black communities was was not so different at this time as it is today. And that's right. certainly where she was. So she um she absolutely grew up probably in the church as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. My 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 point is sort of twofold. Is one is that the son of a bitch, fucking eater. One is that the um, you know, the church may have satisfied that that performance aspect to her, as well as being an important part of her life through Christianity and practicing that and preaching it. But also that um, to point out very clearly, without getting too political, that people in in the LGBTQA community. Some of those people are, are deeply Christian. They want to be yeah. part of churches, they and are. so even yeah. even at times where maybe she was had to go through forcefully against her will, or, or as part of maybe what she thought she wanted at the time due to social pressure, kind of all that stuff that quite quite honestly we we here can't understand, um, is that she still wanted to be part of the church in, in lieu of those things. So you know, it just goes to show to those that maybe don't really think that. People in those communities don't want to be part of it. They desperately do. Yeah. They, they really do. You don't have to be straight and a Christian. You know, you, you can be a lot of things in a Christian and still be a very good person. I know from a lot of the churches that I've involved myself in is, you know, whether or not you're gay or lesbian or whatever you are, it's that's something that can be totally accepted by the church uh, if you find the right church for it. I know the, the the attributes of Christianity that I ascribe to says that no matter who the fuck you are or what you believe or or how you live your life, you're completely part of the church or accepted by Christ or 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 whatever whatever configuration you want to like apply to it. But for her, I think back in those days, uh, if she had found a church that would say like you're lesbian, okay, that's fine. Everyone has their thing. Come on. I Our think God still I, loves I you. think I think at that time she was not disclosing she was a lesbian to anyone because that marriage had already fizzled and she was essentially doing an aspect of oh I've been converted so therefore I'm just a regular woman right would you allow right. me to be involved in your church to that point but uh, to the broader point we're talking about of of singing and and lyrically having songs that are are sexually driven as well as heavy themes of religious concept there's a rich legacy of that with so many um individuals who are individuals who are black who are performers and i mean that's you know that's easy to point out with like an al green or marvin gay prince r kelly um, Ooh, expansive um list. you could go into yeah it's a it's a it's a, it's an extensive it uh you could go into d'angelo those sort of things where clearly there were they were prefaced in their early life with with a, a really big influence of going to church and that sort of thing, but then lyrical content and otherwise they dabble into to sexual elements. So I think I that to me I feel like the manner in which her songs were so um, sexually provocative in her playing days and then going into the church she was you know it, and certainly I would I would assume in her early life church played a, a big part of her life whether she wanted it to or not is very much in line with this broader idea of of artistry in that community i mean yeah i mean if, if like even if you wanted to analyze the deeper thought processes of songs and sexual energy i mean songs of solomon which is a a a book in the bible is mm -hmm. all about one man's sexual lust for a woman and that's straight up in the hell holy bible yeah hell yeah <laughs> you just got you just got ky so hard ky ky is dude, so hard right dude, now I, i'll tell you right now I, whatever woman solomon was singing about he loved that pussy he, he loved did that pussy. he did mm. he was mm. i'm going back to that pussy mountain definitely yeah, yeah. i i also want to i just want to bring up that 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 big cat brought up d'angelo and big cat has a full album 
like a full vinyl album of D'Angelo in his house. I've seen it. <laughs> Big Cat loves D'Angelo. D'Angelo you get, I, I, yeah. I do yeah. love D'Angelo. I do. I do love D'Angelo. Voodoo, Voodoo was a was a was a perfect album. If you go front to back on Voodoo, that's a. I'm not gonna take it. I won't take it. That was a. That set up 20 years of of R&B. That set up 20 years of R&B. KY, Look, you can leave this in or not. You can leave this in or not. I don't care. Why? It's- well, I'm leaving it in. This this is easily the third time you brought up D'Angelo in. In an episode that we're gonna keep He's in. Important. I, I, He's you important. know, you know my esteem for him. You know my esteem for him. Uh, Brown Sugar comes out. Okay, wow, what a powerful album that is. Okay, great. Voodoo comes out, and that's just. Please, if you're a listener, maybe check us out. But please, please check out Voodoo by D'Angelo on any of your streaming. But maybe services. check us out. Do yourself a favor. But also check us out. But also check us out. Also check us out. <laughs> if I could, if I could put. One enormous caveat on this episode. Uh, if you feel like we've misrepresented a community, the black community, the gay community, um, use wrong pronouns, any of that stuff, let us know. Yes, Just, please. Like, on, please. On, and honestly, educate. Please do not come at us and be like, y'all are some ignorant ass white folks. We, a, we know that. So don't tell us that again. Give me new information uh, I can use. We, we are more more than more than willing to uh, to certainly evolve with the with, uh, yeah. What we should be saying and how we interpret things. Please, exactly. Please. I, I really don't want this to come off as like some sort of pre-apology because that's not how it's meant. It's meant to say like, listen, we've, we've, you know, Ryan's done a great job of finding this person and, and trying to celebrate her and, and bring her to people. Um, you know, and as far as we know, she never represented herself as him as far as pronouns are concerned. It, it, it is well understood and, and probably well assumed by a lot of queer historians that she was a lesbian. So, you know, we've tried to represent those things as as equitably as possible. But if you do have a problem with it, let us know. We celebrate all these communities we spoke about right. this evening. Certainly, if if we feel misrepresented, let us know, please. Just absolutely, and yeah. and we'll make the adjustments. I want to give one caveat to that. If if your name is Francis and you tried to correct me on what was aristocratic and and royal oh boy. on the Henry Paget he episode. Go fuck yourself. Get him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that also had nothing to do with Henry Paget's sexuality or any of that stuff. It was no, about it British didn't. royalty titles. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even think that guy lived in this country. I think he was from England. <laughs> no, he was. Correctly. He was. He was from England. The guy that the guy was like correcting me. Like, wow, you need to learn the difference between royal and and and. No, whatever. I mean that guy can get fucked. Get if fuck I'm if here. I am if I am misappropriating some archaic title, quite frankly. I don't fucking care. Yeah, get fucked. Yeah. Just get fucked. Just but get but fucked. is it, right. But as far as our intention about elevating these folks, this is exactly what we're trying to do. So don't don't be ignorant and say some bullshit that that means nothing and does nothing for us. If if you want to say something constructive and and be and help us educate ourselves, feel free to do so. Like seriously, hit us up on on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. But like, don't don't just say something ignorant and then sign off. Yeah, yeah. We are more than willing to to try to be part of the community that is 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 forward and and. Being willing to educate on that, absolutely. Please, we are, we are advocates. Contributors need to learn the difference between royal and aristocracy. Aristocracy. Fuck you. It's okay. It's okay, Jay Money. It's okay. He doesn't. He can't hurt you anymore. This is America. <laughs> this is America. We don't have those titles. Get fucked, my man. We don't have those titles for a reason, bro. Think about it, Francis. Francois. Francois. Frank. And that's that's what I have, guys. That's where we wrap tonight. Dude, Gladys is just pretty fucking good. Oh, yeah, dude. She's yeah, dope. Man. Do we wanna do we wanna one more time? Uh but please go ahead and let us know anything you thought about this episode on uh Facebook, Instagram, the Twitter we definitely didn't forget about. You can find us streaming on Spotify, iTunes, or anywhere you find your streaming podcasts. We love you, be safe, and get ready for our next episode next time. Ooh, that was a sick ass plug. Should we go ahead and uh, pull the cord? Yeah, let's cut this. Turn, turn this bitch off. Turn this bitch off.